And then pay attention to where your mind goes when something shows up. Ask yourself some questions when a challenge shows up or something unexpected shows up, something outside the realm of the way that you planned, you know, the whole universe to work. Is God the power or is the situation powerful? I mean, really, it, it, we're talking about, we talked Friday night, and I told everybody, this week we're going to do an experiment. Every time we look at our bills, we're going to laugh at them. <laughs> Cindy said she's been doing that, and it works fine. No, just laugh at those bills because I, what, you know, we're not going to look at a bunch of bills and, and then like, you know, increase the money by like, oh, you know, if I could do that, man, I'd do that every month at the church. But, but we're not going to do that. All we're going to do is decrease our reception to the ideas of God that are already out there. You want to read a book that you want to talk about lack, you want to talk about limitation, read the book, The Pursuit of Happiness. The movie's okay, but read the book. Read about a man who had sole custody of his son, who was evicted from his apartment, who then applied for an internship as a stockbroker with no pay. A man who never had to go to social services and give up his son. A man who lived in the train station of the San Francisco BART. A man who ran, literally, to get to the line so that he can get into the homeless shelter. And where did all of his strength come from? His faith. Here is a guy that went from selling these stupid little bone scanners to owning a multi-million dollar stock broker corporation that he built just with his own belief in himself, his desire to take care of his son. And I think about this all the time because nothing that I can imagine that any one of us will go through will ever compare to us having a child and, and starting to have to live in the tri-rail bathroom. You know, it's small, the people that are big on commitment. And this is an example, Chris Bardner. You know, Dr. King says, and as I conclude, that if the early people, the early Christians, and I'm talking about the followers of the teachings of Jesus, in those early days, the members at the church rejoiced in what they believed. What did they believe? Love, non-judgment, abundance, acceptance, healing, comfort, sharing, universal oneness, not excluding people. Read it. We just read it for six weeks. And so there was a powerful idea. And this church in those early days wasn't some thermometer that recorded the ideas and principles of popular opinion and told people how to vote. It was a thermostat that transformed the very citizenship of society. This early church sought to convict people for being disturbers of the peace because they agitated the way things were. And anybody in power doesn't want somebody to agitate the way things is, the way things are. Thank you. And so, as I wrap this up, I think to myself, what is in power in my head that needs to be disturbed? What in my life doesn't work? I know it doesn't work. It hasn't worked, but I'm about to step in again to try. Well, maybe this time. You know, it's not going to work. So let's just accept it's not going to work and move through. Let's recognize. Dr. King said these early people that followed the teachings of Jesus, he said they were God intoxicated and not intimidated. And so everyone, I have an invitation today. If you drifted into crisis mode, have a drink. Have a drink of spirit, a metaphorical drink. If you feel intimidated intoxicate yourself with positive ideas. Believe that there is a power greater than yourself that's already taking care of the problem. Let's, as a church, make a choice that we are going to go outside and disturb the peace.
We are going to agitate the world that is so caught up in fears because I'm preparing the people of God that in the next 45 days, they are going to try and press every fear in you to get you to vote one way or another. Then all of a sudden, everything is going to be fine November 7th. Don't buy into it. Follow your heart. Speak the truth. Act crazy. Be happy. Believe. Yes, we believe. Just don't believe in the paper. Don't believe in what one tells you. Don't believe in the fear. Let's leave here today and let everyone know that we are a part of something big, that we are a part of something faithful, that we are a part of a church that is built on faith and not fear. This means, yes, we believe. Yes, I believe. And let us even believe today that even a crisis that any one of us is individually facing is the starting point for a deeper awareness of God in our life this very moment. Yes, we believe. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, God. And so it is.